Well, hello everyone. Welcome to a quick post-game chat here. I happen to be at the University of Michigan right now after Michigan knocked off Wisconsin. But earlier this afternoon, the NCAA Tournament Men's Basketball Selection Committee revealed the top 16. As you can see on your left, uh, or my, my left, your right, uh, they revealed their top 16 for the way the bracket would be as of right now. And then after, you can go to NCAA.com and March Madness to check out uh, how I put the bracket together using that top 16 and then filling out the rest of the bracket on March Madness. Okay, so a couple of quick comments, and we'll take a couple of quick questions. Um, number one, no surprise at the top four, Duke, Tennessee, Virginia, and Gonzaga. Uh, I do think it's significant that Gonzaga is back in at a one seed. Um, their body of work is not going away. They beat Duke and Maui. Uh, they may not be going against quad one teams the rest of the way in the WCC, but their body of work is certainly uh, strong enough to be a one seed. And if you watch them with the eye test, you could see that as well. Uh, I will say this, uh, that Gonzaga uh, also um, is, is great to sh is another example of why the selection committee continues to harp that November, December games mean as much as January and February. Because first of all, the net rankings don't, dis don't discriminate of when the game is played. So the fact that Gonzaga had all those great games in November and December, they count just as much if they played them in January and February. All right, further down, Kentucky at a five spot. You can see Kentucky uh, is a solid two right now, waiting for those showdowns against Tennessee. Uh, there'll be two games in the SEC. Uh, so they have a chance to obviously move up to the one line. What if they were to sweep the, the balls? Would Tennessee drop down? Or would Kentucky replace them? Uh, Michigan is a strong two, just knocked off Wisconsin, avenging that loss. I don't think the Wolverines will probably drop from that two line. Uh, North Carolina, Michigan State, uh, also, you know, strong twos. Uh, I would say that Michigan State will have to wait and see if they can hold their position. They got Purdue knocking on them right now uh, in that nine spot as the first three. Uh, Kansas, so, so you wonder, okay, how can Kansas be a three with them dropping games in the Big 12? What if they don't even win the Big 12? Could they be seated higher than, let's say, Kansas State? And the answer is yes, because of their body of work. Now, they can't just completely go into the tank, but think about what Kansas has already. They've got a win over Tennessee. That's number two team on your list there. They've got a win over Michigan State. That's number eight. They've got a win over Marquette. That's number 12. They've got a win um, over Villanova, which is not on that list, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, Houston at number 11 out of the American. Will they have another chance for quad one win? No but they have a chance to probably hold that three spot if they can win the American. Marquette, as I'm taping this playing Villanova, they, I think, are in a good spot right now. Could they go up and down? I don't see them getting the two. They could certainly go down depending on what happens in the rest of the Big East. Iowa State, by virtue of how strong they played in the Big 12, that's why they're in that spot. And Nevada uh, is a four, and the reason the Wolfpack are a four is because they don't have the quad one wins to put them higher. They're not going to have another chance because the Mountain West Conference is just not that strong right now. Louisville, tremendous job by Chris Mack, getting them in a position where they are number four seed. Uh, this was supposed to be a rebuilding year. That win over North Carolina really helping the Cardinals uh, to get into that spot. Now, Wisconsin, this, uh, there were four going into today. Losing to Michigan, not a bad loss by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I think that Wisconsin will be consistently right there to be a four seed, regardless of what happened. The interesting team to watch will be Villanova. Uh, they're not in the top 16 in large part because they're non-conference. Lost to Penn, lost to Furman, lost at home to Michigan. Not a bad loss, but once again, that doesn't bode well for them getting a top four seed at this moment. But they certainly could play higher. Um, one other thing, and I said this earlier, I do think that Indiana is a great example. Uh, the reason I have them in my bracket at the back end is because of the wins they've got. They've got three wins over the top 16, even though they lost seven in a row and lost seven of eight, beating Marquette, Louisville, and winning at Michigan State. So the back part of the bracket, there's a lot of teams that are going to be hard to put in. And uh, I'll just tell you that if you've got great wins early in the season, it's going to help you tremendously. All right, so let's take a couple quick questions before we get out of here. Um, Let's see here. Cody says, Tennessee-Kentucky games will have a big impact on the top 16. There's no question. Kentucky can go up to the one line. Tennessee can hold their spot. Um, Drew, I just explained why Kansas is still high. K-State, Bill Anderson wants to know. Well, K-State didn't have the non-conference. That's why they're not in the top 16 yet. 
if they were to win the Big 12, knock off Kansas again, they got a great shot to be in there. Um, Dan says, keep sleeping on Villanova. I wasn't. I had them as a five seed. The committee, the reason they didn't is because of the fact they don't have the non-conference wins right now. Uh, Glenn says, a lot of changes coming in the next five weeks. There's no question about that. If you remember last year when they did this, Oklahoma was in the top 16 in a four seed. Then they went on a losing skid, and they barely made the tournament. Uh, Jordan wants to know, do I think Carolina can move up to one seed with wins over Virginia and Duke? Um, if they do that, no question. they got a chance to potentially be a one. But my gut is that they're going to hold in that two spot. Um, Cody, right? That's right. The losses to Furman and Penn. Can Gonzaga make the Final Four, asks Tom. Uh, I think for sure, not only are they going to make it, I think they could win the national championship. That's who I have um, winning the championship at this juncture. Uh, Joel wants to know which school has the most danger of falling out of the top 16. I would say at this juncture, um, I'll give you three candidates. I mean, it's Iowa State, Louisville, and Wisconsin are in the most danger zone. Um, it's probably Louisville, uh, only because... They're overachieving to this point. So I would say if I had to pick one that might fall out of the 16, it would be Louisville. Rob says, can Kansas move to two if they win the Big 12? Um, sure, because that would mean they'd beat K-State, beat Baylor. Uh, maybe they knock off Iowa, well, Iowa State then in the Big 12 tournament. They've already played them twice. Um, sure not. Sure, sure they could. Um, Winston says here, do I think Kentucky can move up to one seed if they beat Tennessee? Yes, I do. Um, Maurice wants to know my early Final Four picks. Uh, I would say at this juncture, and I'm not going all chalk, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's the top four that you see on your screen. But I think there's going to be a Big Ten team, and I'm not just saying that because I do work for the Big Ten Network. Um, I think there's going to be a Big Ten team. Whether it's Michigan or Michigan State, I've gone back and forth. Uh, and right now I'm back to saying Michigan, not just because I'm standing behind Michigan. Uh, defensively, what I saw in their win over Wisconsin, I would, I would lean Michigan. Not having Joshua Langford from Michigan State has really hurt them. We're seeing it more and more. Um, a lot of, I knew Villanova fans would go all over this. They're not 16 teams better. Be patient. Villanova, I think, will ultimately get into that top 16. Uh, the reason they're not in is because of the body of work at this point. Earl wants to know how high Purdue can get. Um, if they lose one more time in the Big Ten, um, you know, I think a three seed's probably where they should be because they didn't have the greatest non-conference. They're doing great in the league. Uh, Brandon says Syracuse should be on the list. Don't think so. They have not done it overall. Their non-conference is not strong enough for them to be in there. Um, Jesus wants to know, why is Duke over Tennessee? So this is a great example. Um, Tennessee may be number one. Duke has better wins Overall, so let's look at this list. They beat Kentucky. They're number five. Uh, Duke also, um, i trying to think who else they beat in this list. Uh, they beat Indiana, but they're not on this list. Um, trying to remember. <laughs> oh, they haven't played North Carolina yet. Oh, of course. What am I making? Virginia. So, yeah, Duke has wins over Virginia and Kentucky. That's number three and number five. Excuse me. So that's why they're ahead in terms of their seeding right now. Um, I disagree with Benjamin saying Wisconsin's not that strong. Uh, can Kyle says, can Cincinnati break the top 16 if they beat Houston on the road? Uh, yes, they'd have a great shot uh, certainly to do that. Um, you know, they've had a phenomenal season outside of the really the outlier loss to East Carolina. And then the uh, early season home loss to Ohio State. Um, let's take one or two more here as we get up against the 10-minute uh, mark coming up. Um, let's see. Scariest team that's outside the top 16 asks Andrew. Um, well, Villanova is one of them because Villanova certainly could get to the Final Four. Uh, outside of this top 16. First of all, don't dismiss Washington. The Pac-12 gets no love, and Washington defensively is playing great with that zone that Mike Hopkins put in from Syracuse. Um, I think they're going to climb higher, and I would not dismiss Washington. Um, I would say for sure Villanova, that's an easy one out of the Big East. And, um, uh, you know, Iowa, I wouldn't 
get rid of Iowa yet either. Uh, I think they're another one that could could uh, jump up there. All right, Andrew, Washington was the answer that you were looking for. Glad I made you happy on that one. All right, so that's a wrap on our quick chat on the NCAA Tournament Men's Basketball Selection Committee's Top 16. You can check that out on NCAA.com and March Madness, where my latest bracket is. Our next bracket will be a week from Tuesday, and will be every Tuesday, uh, including Champ Week, uh, leading up into Selection Sunday. Of course, you can see our post-game interview from Michigan. I just talked to John Teske after Michigan knocked off Wisconsin. We'll have the Power 36 coming your way on Monday, and the March Madness 365 podcast of course, will be posted late Monday night into Tuesday morning. Thanks for watching our quick chat here on the committee's top 16. I'm Andy Katz for NCAA.com and March Madness.